and to make it more efficient. But tonight they're frustrated and they warn that if there are delays in the planning process, that money could be at risk. Milford Haven, the third biggest port in the UK and our largest energy port. From ferries to fishing, sailing boats to enormous tankers, the Clethi estuary supports thousands of jobs. But it used to be far more. At one time, there were five refineries in this area. Now, there's only one. Merco, the last to close in 2014, took 400 jobs with it. And according to the man in charge of this port, they're competing in a global market. Uh, that refinery plant is being dismantled, being sold to uh, Pakistan, I think, where it will be exported and then rebuilt to continue refining in another country uh, that's halfway around the globe. Key to keeping that competitive edge is making it easy for these international companies to invest. You know, it's no good saying uh, to a board in San Antonio, uh, we can do this investment in Milford Haven, we'll get the consent in four years' time, or we can do this consent in San Antonio and get the consent in six months' time. The, the money will go to San Antonio. So unless we are mindful of the competitive position, we're going to continue to lose uh, some of these businesses. Across the estuary, the biggest employer in the area and the only refinery left here, Valero. In November, they announced plans to invest £100 million in a new combined heat and power generation unit. It's currently going through the early stages of the planning system and they say it's vital that it's an efficient process. And the onus is on the Welsh Government to work with us to ensure that we reach our schedule. This is a development of national significance here in Wales and we're up against time and hopefully all the different um, bodies involved will work with us to ensure we, we um, get the spade in the ground when we want it. What's at stake if it's not a swift process, Stephen? Well, if it's not a swift process, it, it ties everything up. It, the costs start to rise and we have to look at future investment then. I mean, it, this is all this is all cost driven. It's about you know making sure the future of the refinery is secure for jobs here and for the future as well. Ports are not devolved to Cardiff Bay, but areas like the economy, planning and infrastructure are in the hands of the Welsh Government. Down the road in Pembroke Dock, Mainstay Marine are in the business of building boats. This week, Cabinet Secretary Leslie Griffiths announced that the company had won the Welsh Government's contract to build two new fisheries patrol boats. No planning required there. But as the minister responsible for the planning system, she told me, just like in the rest of the UK, it needs to be efficient. We brought forward the, the Planning Act in 2014. I'm now implementing various parts of that. But it is really important that businesses feel that it works for them. However, you know, planning is for everybody. It's there for the development and use of our land. Shakespeare wrote of Milford Haven, tell me how Wales was made so happy as to inherit such a haven, but how we take advantage of such a legacy will shape these waterways and our economy. The bid is still in its early stages at the moment, but we should have a final decision before the end of the year. Planners will be assessing how a development like this uh, could help the economy, but also the environmental impact such a development could have on an area like this in the Pembrokeshire National Park. But what the company is saying tonight is that an investment like this could be a huge show of confidence in the site and secure its future for the next 20 to 30 years. Tulare, thank you. Tulare Glyn Jones in Milford Haven, thank you. Now, on Wednesday, we were in Cowbridge in the Vale of Glamorgan talking to shop owners on the high street who were worried about the increase in their business rates expected in April. There was concern there's been little detail so far about a new rate relief scheme designed to help cut costs. Well, today, the Welsh Government published more information about the £10 million it will provide in support. So we sent our political correspondent, Arwen Jones, back to Cowbridge to see what small businesses there make of it. Business rates are a tax that owners of businesses like these on the High Street in Cowbridge in the Vale of Glamorgan pay on their property, such as a shop, cafe or restaurant. Like council tax, they pay for services provided by the local authority. Concerns have been raised from across Wales that the increase in April could make life difficult for retailers, with some fearing they could go under. So today, the Welsh Government set out details of its £10 million fund to help. My ambition has been to try and design a scheme that is workable and deliverable uh, and we're confident now that even in the very few weeks we've had to design it, that that will be capable of being delivered. 
We've been hearing concerns from business owners like Sally Stevenson, who are trying to balance the books. She owns the pencil case shop in Cowbridge and on Wednesday told us that the business rates increase would make life difficult for her. As a small business owner, she qualifies for an extra £500 to be knocked off her bill in April, meaning she won't really be worse off this year. However, the introduction of the increase is being phased in over three years, so next year she might have to pay more. Oh, a huge help. Um, I, there was a situation where I did think I would be having to pay £2,000 from April onwards, which was a huge increase in the rates bill. It was 180% increase. If I were in England, I wouldn't be paying any rates at all. So I've now got to find nearly £1,000 a year to pay the rates bill because I'm in Wales. Well, I could use that £1,000 to invest in the business, to employ a new member of staff. Businesses like Sally's with a rateable value of between six and twelve thousand pounds will get five hundred pounds off their bill. Those from twelve to fifty thousand pounds will get a fifteen hundred pound reduction. But if it's over fifty thousand pounds, you'll get nothing. Julian Hitchcock owns two restaurants and a hotel on the high street and expects to pay thousands of pounds more in April. My rates are going to be increasing by about forty forty thousand pound a year. For, for the businesses in Cowbridge and we're going to get an extra £1,500 reduction. So I suppose 1500 is better than nothing, but in the scheme of things, it's, it's not going to make a massive amount of difference. Prices, in theory, are going to have to go up because they have to. Some business owners who expect to see their rates increase have questioned why others who will see their rates fall will still get help under this scheme. Now, there are concerns about which businesses will be eligible for the support. For example, what constitutes a high street? Now, what the Welsh Government has done is left that for the councils to decide. But the Conservatives say that could lead to some confusion. And when you consider that the rates will go up in April of this year, time is of the essence. The Welsh Government says it's confident there'll be plenty of time to get the scheme in place while it works on developing a new permanent scheme to be introduced next year. Erwin Jones reporting. A 23-year-old barman from Cardiff has been found guilty of murdering his girlfriend, who'd come to the UK from China to study. 24-year-old Shishi B was attacked by Jordan Matthews in what Cardiff Crown Court heard was a vicious, sustained and prolonged attack. She had a cardiac arrest and died in hospital after the attack at their flat in Llandaff last August. Matthews is due to be sentenced on Tuesday. A deputy head teacher has been banned from schools for a minimum of 10 years for having sex with teenage girls. A disciplinary panel found 17 out of 20 allegations of unacceptable professional misconduct proved against Jonathan Norbury, who's 35. Swansea Council has launched an inquiry into his dismissal, which included an £8,000 payoff and a positive reference. The number of deliberately started grass fires in Wales increased by nearly a third last year. Welsh Government figures show just over 2,600 grass fires were started on purpose between 2015 and 16. That's up from just over 1,900 the year before. The report suggests good weather is likely to have been a factor. Deliberately set grass fires is a significant problem for all services involved for grass fires in South Wales. However, we are working together to achieve an outcome of educating communities, reducing this, putting engagement events on so the communities understand the impact it has on attending agencies, the communities and their families. A man from Wrexham with a mental age of seven who was wrongly told by the Department for Work and Pensions he would lose his disability benefits is to have them reinstated. Mark Hughes also has mobility problems after contracting meningitis as a baby. He was denied the personal independence payment after an assessment ruled he could take care of himself. The DWP has now apologised. Matthew Richards reports. <laughs> Mark Hughes's family say he has mobility and balance problems, memory lapses and mood swings. He lives alone but has regular assistance and meals are provided for him. He struggles with reading, writing and communication and everyday tasks are a challenge too. Well, up the stairs and... Um, making hot drinks and all that. But despite earning a disability allowance all his adult life, a recent assessment for the replacement personal independence payment rated him able to look after all of his own needs and he was denied the benefit, which can range from £22 to £140 per week. 
Well, I've been looking here at Mark Hughes's PIP assessment results, and uh, well, if you're anything like me, you might not have seen one of these forms before. But on every measurement of his daily activities, he's been ranked zero out of eight, which means he's not entitled to any money whatsoever. You've only got to be in, in his kind of um, presence, and you know that he's got a problem. And so I think that whoever is doing this disability um, assessment really need to get the act together because Mark needs this for the rest of his life. It's his only form of um, um, any kind of money to help him out with his, with his, with his problems. Mark isn't alone. 140,000 people in Wales have been or will be assessed for PIPs. But Disability Wales say they believe some genuine cases are being refused help. People with, um, for example, uh, learning difficulties, people with mental health issues, conditions like autism, um, or other impairments, invisible impairments, seem to um, not fare so well um, through the assessment process. And then as a result, you know, they get perhaps turned down for PIP. After we filmed with Mark Hughes, the Department for Work and Pensions told us he is entitled to personal independence payments and it will apologise for the error. It hasn't said how that error was made, but says successful appeals are often due to more evidence being presented. Good news. Yeah. Brilliant, Brilliant news. news. Thank you so much. Love a party, you know? Yeah. <laughs> The U-turn is good news for Mark, but with only 3% of PIP decisions successfully overturned, others may not be so lucky. Matthew Richards reporting. Still to come on the programme, seeing through the smoke, groundbreaking thermal imaging technology developed in Flincher, helping firefighters save lives in the US and across Europe. And Wales captain Ali Wynne-Jones is tipped by former British and Irish Lions players to captain the tour to New Zealand this summer. Now, it's one of the biggest economies in the world, and with Brexit on the horizon, many businesses here are looking to China as they explore new markets. A delegation is heading to Shanghai and Hong Kong tomorrow to seek business links and promote Welsh art and culture. One business has told us it could be worth millions of pounds. Jordan Davis has more. Meet Bali, a yellow Labrador with a nose valuable all over the world. His talents are about to be exported to Hong Kong. He'll be working with border control, looking for illicit meat. The Flincher-based firm that trained him, on the face of it, may be unlikely exporters. But they're about to head to China as part of a Welsh government trade mission. We're offering them a package where if they need dogs, we can supply trained dogs. If they need uh, training for the handlers, based on our expertise, we're hoping that we can promote that. At this company in Merthyr, it's all about precision engineering. They believe their hoses, used in space, can compete in the saturated Chinese market. This is an extremely varied trade mission. Artists alongside high-tech companies like this. Welsh businesses want to take every opportunity they can to sell their product abroad, especially when traditional export markets like Europe and America may be changing. Amnitech has sold this abroad for years, but admit they've forgotten how they won those contracts. This mission is about new markets and old skills. We want to grow our export business, but uh, of our own volition, we would struggle to do that. So with some assistance like we're having with the mission from the, the Welsh Government, uh, it'll give us a great opportunity, I think, to do that, to find new markets that we're not operating in and to reinvigorate markets that we've been operating in for some time but we don't know how we started. Welsh exports to China have seen steady growth with machinery and equipment driving recent rises. From £260 million in 2006 to nearly £370 million in 2015. Although that's a dip from the more than £400 million high in 2013 and compares to £5 billion worth of exports to the EU two years ago. These bears from the tiny Rebel Brewery in Newport are already trademarked in China. And these cans are destined for abroad. Bradley here feels China is a sleeping craft ale giant and could be worth a million pounds worth of business a year. China is already a destination for high quality British brands. Um, you know, consumers want something a bit more. Um, and on the beer side to it, mass produced beer is now kind of slowing down. Um, people want something a bit more exciting. Um, and we think that we've got that. 
and the arts aren't being neglected. The dragon, as potent a symbol in China as it is in Wales. And Colette, an illustrator, knows this. She's about to take her work to a publisher on the mission. Evidence of the variety of ambition Welsh firms have for the country. I'll be trying to sell my book to them, trying to get them to, to invest in it and whether they'll, they'll publish it there in China. Um, I'll also be gathering information for my next project, which will focus entirely on Chinese dragons. Um, and I'll be speaking with a professor in Shanghai University who specialises in Chinese mythology and Chinese dragons. So I'm really excited to talk to him. As an accompaniment to the visit, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and their Chinese principal guest conductor will also be on the trip. The potential for Wales in China is huge, but making sure all our exporters hit the right note there won't be without its challenges. Well, one company from Flincher is looking towards Europe to expand. Groundbreaking thermal imaging technology has been developed to help firefighters save lives in smoke-filled environments. It's already being used in the United States and is about to be launched on the continent. Our business correspondent Brian Meehan has been to see how it works. American firefighters already use it to save lives, helped by technology designed and developed in Flincher. So how does it work? This reconstruction shows a familiar scene as a firefighter enters a smoke-filled room, his visibility severely restricted. A small camera sends thermal images like this one to a microscreen in the mask, making it easier to spot people in trouble. It can also be beamed to a computer screen for others to monitor what's going on. So that you can see, you know, there's a person there, there's a hotspot there. Traditionally, handheld equipment has been used, which limits movement, and the cost means only one is used per crew. The hands-free um, benefits of, of not having to hold the, the sort of traditional thermal imaging camera um, and the lower cost as well, uh, which enables potentially more firefighters to have this technology, um, which obviously should hopefully go on to help save lives. The new device was developed by Scott Safety, a leading manufacturer of personal safety equipment. The electronics, software and the system for transferring the image was designed by Flint-based Taylor Dowding Innovation. This innovation is part of a significant Welsh technology sector that employs 39,000 people in over 3,100 companies. And the network that links them together, SNET, expects that to continue to grow over the next three years. If we look back over the years and said, well, we'd all be walking around with mobile phones that are taking cameras that can access the internet, you know, where technology is going and the rate it is moving, some of the things that currently are um, within uh, our universities and in our research departments at the moment can come, very, come through very quickly in terms of commercialisation and application. <laughs> The thermal technology is playing its part in a sector now worth over £8 billion to the Welsh economy. It's hoped more innovations like these will help more businesses to grow and create well-paid, highly skilled jobs in future. It's clever stuff, isn't it? Well, time for tonight's sport now. Over to you, Claire. Lucy, thank you. Hello, good evening. The British and Irish Lions tour to New Zealand. Maybe a few months off, but coach Warren Gatlin says he's been closely watching the Six Nations as he begins to assemble an idea of which players he'll be selecting. Well, playing for the Lions is considered the pinnacle of any rugby career, and Gatlin, who names his squad in April, says competition for places will be fierce. One Welshman is already being tipped as captain. He's already assembled his support coaches. Now Warren Gatlin's mind is turning to which players will be on the plane to New Zealand this summer. The opening two rounds of the Six Nations has produced some fantastic rugby. The tournament, the perfect vehicle for individuals to prove themselves, knowing Gatland is watching. You know, I've seen some good performances at the moment. I haven't written down a squad at the stage and just you know, definitely open-minded um, and... You know, if someone will come through out of the blue, I want to make sure that I keep an open mind. And you know, when we when we come together as a group of coaches and we're selecting and finalising, you know, what are their thoughts as well? So, there's still a heck of a lot to play for in the remaining three games. Four years ago, Sam Warburton and Alan Wynne Jones led the Lions to a 2 1 series win over Australia. Warburton missed the last test through injury, and Alan Wynne Jones stepped in. The current Wales skipper is being tipped by many former Lions to lead them again. Front runner, um, 
has to be Alan Wynne Jones. Um, he's respected in New Zealand. You have to anticipate that he's going to be a test starter. Uh, certainly would be on my team. Well, Alan Wynne Jones played really well on Saturday. I think he maybe have his nose in front slightly. Experienced player, been out there before, um, playing pretty well. You know, I think Alan Wynne Jones is showing his characteristics as a leader of men, and uh, you know, I think he's probably the favourite at this stage. But Wales legend Gareth Edwards, who played 10 times for the Lions, including for the 1971 team that last won a series in New Zealand, believes Sam Warburton's relationship with Gatland means he's in pole position. I don't think the fact that, he ha that he's not captain at the moment with Wales uh, would, um, would detract at all from him being selected as a Lions captain because he's got a track record. He's shown that uh, he's been there, done it. And, uh, you know, from my experience, um, people like Willie John McBride in my day, you know, had benefited greatly from being on other tours and uh, was an outstanding captain. It may not be just the Lions in New Zealand this summer. Wales's test against Tonga could be moved there following concerns over the suitability of the stadium. The game is likely to be played in Auckland. 15 Welshmen, 10 English, 9 Irish and 3 Scots went on the last Lions tour to Australia. Warren Gatland will name his squad this time round on April the 19th. And there's a rugby action tonight. The Scarlets welcome Zebra in the Pro 12. The game is live on Scrum 5 Live over on BBC Two Wales from 7.30. Now, football. Neil Warnock has given the strongest indication yet. He's keen to stay at Cardiff City and mount a promotion channel next season. Having steered Cardiff away from the Championship relegation zone during his five months in charge, Warnock says he feels refreshed there. He has a meeting with the chairman, Mehmet Dalman, next week to discuss his future. I'm like an old man, an old father, really, aren't I? I'm right proud of my kids when I look around the dressing room because they're doing what I want them to do and they know that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're going to have disappointments and, you know, um, because that's the, 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 that's the state of the championship and everything, but it's how you overcome them. Well, the Blue Bloods play Rotherham tomorrow. The team Neil Warnock, of course, steered away from the relegation zone last season. In League Two, bottom of the table, Newport County travel to Cambridge. And in the National League, Wrexham are at home to Aldershot. Now, Gareth Bale is set to make his first appearance since November after being passed fit for Real Madrid's match at home to Espanyol tomorrow. The Wales forward has been recovering from ankle surgery. It's, of course, a huge boost for Chris Coleman. Wales' crucial World Cup qualifier against the Republic of Ireland in Dublin is on March the 24th. And uh, finally, some news on Welsh bobsleigh rider Mika Moore. The 24-year-old from Newport is taking part in the bobsleigh world championships out in Germany. And alongside her partner, Misha McNeil, the pair currently are in 11th position after the second round of four heats. They will race again tomorrow afternoon. Well, uh, dare I say, it's almost been spring-like today. Derek is here with the weekend weather. Yes, Claire, spring is just around the corner. No sign of any more snow yet. It's going to stay on the mild side over the weekend. A little bit of rain and drizzle, but a reasonable amount of dry weather as well. And a few places should see the sun. And the sun certainly came out in Barry Bados today. A pleasant afternoon there with a high of 11 Celsius. Further north, not quite so nice in Llangynaval in Denbyshire with a few showers. Now this evening, a few more showers for parts of Mid and North Wales. These will clear away. Most places then dry overnight, maybe one or two showers in the south. Some mist, a few fog patches and not a cold night. So here's the picture for 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. Much of the country dry at this stage. A little bit grey in places, perhaps some low cloud mist. Fog patches, bright though in parts of Powys, stretching northeast towards Wrexham. Breezier in the northwest, and you'll notice some rain lurking over the Irish Sea. Now, during the day, a little rain and drizzle will spread into north and west Wales, further south and east. Many places should get away with a dry afternoon, a mild afternoon again. Temperatures 10 to 12 Celsius, slightly cooler in Snowdonia, with a south to southwesterly breeze. On Anglesey tomorrow, a dry start, but turning damp. Nine degrees the high in Llangevny. In Monmouthshire, cloudy tomorrow, but dry, a bit brighter in the afternoon. A high of 10 in Chepstow. Now, tomorrow evening, spots of drizzle will clear away. Overnight, most places dry, some misty low cloud and fairly mild. On Sunday, the odd light shower, otherwise a lot of dry weather. 
a little sunshine in Welshpool and Newport, but it looks like turning dull and damp later in the afternoon, the cloud lowering with mist and hill fog, some poor visibility to end the day. On Monday, tropical maritime air over us. I don't think we'll break any records, but 15 Celsius is possible in places. Lucy. My goodness me, that's going to be nice. Derek, thank you very much. We'll be back with our next update after the BBC News at 10. But that is Wales today from all of us on the programme. Thank you so much for your company. And do have a really good evening and a great weekend. Bye-bye.